Hey guys, today's video is going to be a little bit different. Um, I tried to make the comparison of the 9800 9, to the 990 Kloss into a finish for a video on Friday. Uh, it was raining, the clip got screwed up, I tried to recreate it just now, and it's, it's way too long. So I'm going to make it its own video, but I've already recorded it. So I'm going to try and find a place to kind of just put the two together. And we'll see how awkward of a transition I have right here. As you can see, looking around, here's here's the 98, there's the 87, no class. They came and loaded it up yesterday. Um, again, thank you, Taylor. I cannot thank you guys enough for that opportunity to get a play with that thing for two whole days. It was a blast. Now, let's get into comparison, and hopefully this doesn't run on and on. So, right off the bat, it is not a fair comparison. We're comparing a 990 Kloss with 925 horsepower to a 9800 John Deere with 850 horsepower. 75 horsepower difference running the same size row head, and Deere's direct cut head is four foot wider than Klosses. So they got a horsepower advantage, and they're taking in less crop with that head. Gives them an advantage. But that Kloss freaking ran circles around this deer. Oh man, it was unbelievable how fast you could shove crop through that machine. That was insane. Now, next up, okay, so you can put a lot more crop through there. Let's talk about the performance of it. And when I'm talking performance, I'm talking um, chopping performance. So... Two problems I had with the Kloss. There is no indicator anywhere on any of them screens that we could find a height indicator. So the older deers, it was anywhere from 1 to 100. 100 was all the way up, 1 was all the way down. These machines here, with no head all the way up, registers as a 50 for some reason. With the corn head all the way up as a 40. And with this direct cut head, all the way up as a 36. Why? I have no idea. But at least I know with all the heads where my header height is at once you get used to it. So like this head chopping right there, I know my skid plates are gonna tap the ground if I set it on a 15. So whenever I round the corner and hit my header height resume, I've got a visual gauge to know, hey, that is at the correct height, away we go. The Kloss, Glenn, Glenn was fighting and fighting with that computer, trying to find a gauge because there was times he was leaving two foot of stubble, then all of a sudden he was digging in the ground. We've got, what is there, 30? We've got a hundred and some acres that, it it looks pretty rough. Now, it's not horrible, but it, it is not the quality that I want. Now, that's something that just, we got to figure out. There's, there's got to be something there somewhere that we just could not find in that computer screen to show us the header height. The other problem I had with the Kloss was the quality of the chop when it came out of the machine. I don't know what it was. If the knives were, we, we only ran it for the two days, and according to the computer, the knives did not need sharpened. It tells you when the knives need sharpened. The deer, we just open. Well, let's go over here and look. This is going to go way too long, I can already tell. Might have to just turn this into its own little video. So, the deer, I can open up this guy, and from the cab, see that shield there with that massive hole in it? That thing folds up and you can look at your knives. So that way, you can see what your knives are like, you can see how much of your knife is left, and then after you run your sharpening, you can look at it and see what it looks like. The cloth doesn't do that. That that whole top assembly is actually bolted shut. So, I don't know. It's one of those things you probably just have to get used to. The computer tells you how long till you need to sharpen based on how long you've run. The thing I don't like about that is it doesn't matter what kind of crop you're cutting. It's just a time. While you've ran X amount of time, it's time to stop sharpen. And they say sharpening is super fast because in that machine... The drum doesn't stop and spin the opposite direction. It just keeps going the same way. Again, one of those things, we just we didn't need a sharpen in the two days we had it, so we didn't get to mess with that. But there was a distinct difference in the cut quality between the two machines. The deer was a lot finer. Even when we set them at the same 
millimeter length because at first his chop length was a lot longer than mine we got them equaled out the deer was cutting it a lot shorter and a lot more uniform where the cloths you were getting a lot of ragged strips coming through for some reason again i don't know if it was a setting i don't know what so it's it's hard to say that that is a fault with the cloths but it was something noticeable in the two days we played with it so that covers power performance no deaf issues and that guy laughed he goes i've never heard of deaf being hot he goes I don't, I don't understand why that's a problem either and he goes of all the machines we have out i've never once took a call on somebody saying hey I, i'm shut down because my deaf system is hot and the fact that deer four years later still has zero answer zero answer from john deere on hey here's how to fix this massive problem that we overlooked um so that that covers that the headers the 12 row cloths versus 12 row deer um i can tell you it can handle feed a whole lot better than deer because we cut some fine stem we cut some heavy stem and that the header never locked up once um the best comparison we had was on thursday the first morning we got to play with it the very first field we went to I was cutting 11 rows of that stuff at 3.6 mile an hour with this. Bart had 10 rows and he was cutting 5.5. So two mile an hour faster, one row less because there, there was no auto steer on it. So in feed, we were losing track. We were crossing rows like crazy. That was aggravating where I had my auto steer enabled. So I was able to stay consistent, cut my 11 rows. And you say 11 rows, you had 12 row head. It's because we always leave one row out so that way you clean up any weeds in between the rows because I want a field to be clean like that. Clean, no no weeds standing out there when I'm done. This is <laughs> this is rambling way too long, I can tell. Um, so the 12 row head was amazing. The direct cut head, it was amazing what that thing could handle. He was running circles around me out here. I was cutting eight to in some heavy spots out in there i was going six they were running nine nine and a half non-stop the best guess oh, of course i already closed it the best guess we have for part of the reason there's such a big difference is in the design look at how much room there is between that auger and these knives the cloths that auger overhangs these knives by a little bit so you have a lot less room that you have to push that crop to get back into there. And then, all well, the bar is all the way up right now, so it's hard to see. So that bar is like right here. On the cloth, it's way out here. So what the cloth is doing is it's pushing that stuff over, giving it a chance to just really suck right through that machine where this one, it wants to push. Okay, so that covers that uh then the only thing left now is comfort i am six foot two so i like to be able to stretch out my legs in a cab the the deer cab just flat blows away the cloth cab comfort wise we'll talk about controls i'm just talking strictly comfort the deer cab because of how far that glass is forward and the harley bar you can really stretch your legs out in there the Coloss machine, you were right up against that window, and we checked a couple different times to make sure that seat was all the way back. That's all the more you had. The brake pedals were an odd setup where they were so tall and then flat, so you had to really curl your heel back to get your foot on it to push them down. I, I didn't understand that at all. Um, Control-wise, Coloss, you know, had that weird, it's almost like a computer mouse for control. You can get used to that. Um... The one thing that I didn't like about it is the lack of functionality on it. Um, the deer cab, I mean, or the deer control, you know, you got header, you got spout, you got all these programmable buttons on the front, programmable buttons on the back, and then your program on the side. The Colossus, there was only one button you could program. And we wound up just switching that to the air horn because the way, the way they're, blinker was kind of forward on the steering wheel you almost had to lean forward to reach that it was kind of an odd little setup but i mean comfort you you can get used to it. i mean the deer cab just gets a guy spoiled 
class cab is perfectly fine cab this just goes above and beyond so there is there's nothing that we found out in the two days of trying it that made us oh yeah class is absolutely the way to go or oh, i'm never gonna buy that thing it is a very impressive machine that we are gonna have to do some serious thinking of whenever we trade that machine which could very well be this winter so once again thank you thank you thank you taylor implement jory thank you for sitting and riding in that thing for two days that looked so boring um it was a lot of fun guys we really appreciate you giving us the opportunity to try it out jory i look forward to uh getting to know you a little bit more talking about the chopper and a few more of them other little ideas we were kind of bouncing back and forth with the other equipment options you guys have with that being said guys i'll talk to you later